It couldn't get any more exciting than this. Two magnificent hockey teams playing at a skill level and a tempo I don't think we have ever seen before in hockey. Mike Keaton, the coach of Canada, what do you expect to see happen tonight? I think you just said it the best. It's an all-out effort by two teams that are great teams. They're going to put everything on the line and take it to the limit. And it's going to be a fabulous sight for all of us to watch. Mike, best of luck to you and the rest of Team Canada. Thanks very much, Ken. Now let's go to Brad Park. I'm at ice level with Igor Dmitriev, the assistant coach and main spokesman for the Soviet team. Your team has played two great games, but you're going to have to have two or three players come through tonight. And who will they be? Baev, Krutov, Makarov, Titisov, Kasatonov, and Larionov. Thank you very much, Igor, and good luck. We'll be with Ron Roosh and Dan Kelly in a moment, so stay tuned as it's going to be a great night in Hamilton. Game one, Friday night in Montreal in overtime. Alexander Samak wins it for the Soviet Union. Game two in Hamilton Sunday night. Wayne Gretzky feeds Mario Lemieux. And in double overtime, Canada wins to tie the series. Welcome to the Cups Coliseum in Hamilton, Ontario, and the Labatt Canada Cup 1987. The final game tonight, the Soviet Union and Canada. Hello again, everyone. Welcome to Hamilton. I don't know what more you can say about these two teams, except I'll say one thing. Tonight, somebody will win this game, win this series, but there will not be a loser. I have just witnessed two of the greatest hockey games I've ever watched, and I'm sure a lot of you have watched along with me and agree. Tonight, whoever wins will be a winner, of course. But the loser will not be a loser. They've both been winners. It's been unbelievable hockey. Ron Roosh, I don't know what they'll do to play game three, but after game one and two, expect anything. Well, expect anything. I, I know one thing that the two coaches downstairs have told me. Both clubs are just walking on air in the dressing room. Mike Keaton had to chase his hockey club off the ice during practice this morning. As for tactics, well, the Soviets have been ganging Grant Fuhr a lot, to more than Fuhr has ever seen with a Soviet team. And as for Canada, they're going to have to defend on their two and twos because the Soviets have been effective there. It should be another classic. Stay with us. Friday night in Montreal, I thought I'd witnessed the best hockey game I'd ever seen, and I had until Sunday night in Hamilton. Like a movable feast, isn't it, Dan? Now here it is, Tuesday night in Hamilton, and we just may see another one. Uh, we have played two games in the playoff round, one game in the primary or preliminary round. Uh, the whole situation is one tie hockey game, two others that were tied and ended up in overtime. So who can say who's the best team out there? The intensity, the speed, the emotion. I've never seen hockey played with the skill level throwing those three ingredients into it. You know, you tend to get lost in the fact that they're so evenly balanced. Listen to the crowd as Team Canada hits the ice here at Top Coliseum and Hamilton. You tend to get lost in the, the fact that these two teams are so evenly matched that the speed level, the high intensity of the game you say, oh, why didn't that guy make that play? How, how could he miss it? When so, the checking, they're getting on you so quick, there, there's just no time to think, or even even that split second isn't there to make a play anymore. So they have just taken the game to a new all-time high here in Hamilton and here in the finals of the Canada Cup. There's Don Koharski, the referee for tonight's game. Meanwhile, another terrific reception from... A standing room only crowd here in Hamilton for Canada. Listen to this. Now, Mike Keenan said it was a big, big factor in the game the other night. The standing ovation to start the game paved for the way to the best period of hockey that Team Canada has played. The opening period the other night. And then in the second overtime, he says the crowd and everything else just rejuvenated the team. 
coach of the Soviet Union, Viktor Tikhonov. Now to the opening ceremony. As Levant Breweries and Hockey Canada proudly present this 1987 Levant Canada Cup. Bonsoir, mesdames, messieurs, bienvenue au Cup Coliseum. C'est avec fierté que la Brassie Labat de Hockey Canada vous présente la Coupe Canada Labat 1987. Tonight's game is the third and last of the finals between Team Soviet Union and Team Canada. Le match de ce soir, le troisième et dernier opposant l'équipe de l'Union Soviétique et l'équipe Canada. Here are the officials for tonight's game. Voici les officiels pour le match de ce soir. Your referee, l'arbitre, from Canada, Mr. Don Koharski. Ladies and gentlemen, the linesman from the Soviet Union, de l'Union Soviétique, Mr. Mikhail Galinovsky. A team Canada from Canada, John D'Amico. Here is the starting lineup for Team Soviet Union. In goals, Johnny Filet, number one, Vladimir Un, Sergei Milnikov. A la défense, on defense. Number two, le numéro deux, Vyacheslav Petisov. Number seven, le numéro sept, Alexei Kazatonov. At left wing, at left goals, number nine, le numéro neuf, Vladimir Krutov. At center, au centre, number eleven, le numéro onze, Igor Larionov. Alain Droit at right wing, Lenio Venkat, number 24, Sergei Makarov. The head coach, l'entraîneur set, Mr. Viktor Kionov. L'entraîneur at the the assistant coach, Mr. Igor Dimitriev. And now, the starting lineup for Team Canada. Johnny Filet, number 31, numéro 31, Grant the Fuhrer. <laughs> On defense, out of defense, number 2, numéro 2, Doug Crossman. <laughs> number 77, numéro 77, Paul Coffey. <laughs> Right wing, Alain Droit. Number 11, numéro 11, Mark Messier. <laughs> At left wing, Alain Droit. Number 66, numéro 66, Mario Lemieux. The assistant coaches, Mr. John Perron, Mr. John Mutler, and Mr. Tom Watt. As it is the custom in international hockey, the two captains, Yasislav Pitisov and Wayne Gretzky, will now exchange gifts on behalf of their teams. Comme c'est la coutume au hockey international, l'échange des cadeaux entre les deux capitaines. Now, introducing the members of the official party for tonight's ceremonial face-off. Maintenant, les personnalités qui procèderont la mise au jeu protocolaire du match de ce soir. Canadian Tire is a proud supporter of sports for people of all ages in communities across Canada, from the Canadian Amateur Hockey Association to the Calgary 1988 Olympic Winter Games. C'est avec fierté que Canadian Tire accorde son appui au sport en général partout au Canada, du hockey mineur jusqu'aux Olympiques d'hiver de Calgary de 1988. Representing the grassroots of hockey, 
représentant de hockey mineur, deux hockey players, Chris et Michel Graham. Representing the Olympic world, representant le monde de l'Olympique, from the Canadian Alpine Ski Team, Miss Lisa Savijavi. <laughs> Representing Canadian Tire, representant Canadian Tire, the Vice President, Mr. Steve Vulcan. Representing the sponsor of the Levant Canada Cup, Mr. Rick Tork, Director of Provincial Sales, Levant Ontario Limited. With the captains come to center ice, please, for the face side. Ladies and gentlemen, please now rise for the singing of the national anthems of both countries by Mr. Michael Burgess. He va chanter les hymnes national.
This is the Labatt Canada Cup on CTV. The winner tonight wins the 1987 edition of the Canada Cup. We're at the Cops Coliseum in Hamilton, game three of the best of three series. The starting goaltenders tonight, the Soviets will go with the veteran, 28-year-old Sergei Milnikov. He's 5-0 in this tournament, a 2.36 goals against average. Grant Fuhr has played in all seven previous games for Canada, and he has a 3.15 goals against average and is seemingly unperturbable in there. As far as the Soviet team is concerned, they've made one major change. They have benched veteran Vasily Perbukin and Igor Kravchuk, a youngster, 21 years of age, who's been bothered by a knee problem, is in the lineup on defense. Mike Keenan, meanwhile, has Rick Tockett dressed for tonight's game, and he will play tonight. How much, we don't know. This comes after a quick flight to Philadelphia to have his knee injury checked out. They say he cannot damage the knee further. And so Tockett is on the bench, and you think he's not ready for tonight's game. And there are the starting lineups. Very predictable. The green unit for the Soviet Union, centered by Larry Onoff. And uh, we'll start the game with Gretzky and Mario Lemieux together, along with Messier on the forward line. And every time you see Larry Onoff out there, you usually see Messier against him, and that's the way we start. Karutov in across the line for Makarov. Centering pass, Messier back-checking, gets it to Gretzky. Behind the back pass for Lemieux, but it's shot out of there by Fatisov. Now to Lariana. Lariana leaving it for Makarov. He's checked by Lemieux from behind. Now Krutov closing in. Gretzky checked him from behind. And Gretzky winds it around. Center. They score! Makarov all alone in front of the net. Set up by Krutov. And an early goal for the Soviets. Doug Crossman at the side of the net let the puck come to him rather than going after the puck and found himself beaten to it. Gretzky clearing it around the net. Crossman is number two as Gretzky is decked. Crossman, well, the puck's already in the net, but Crossman had been beaten to the puck. Here's a better view of it. And you can see that Crossman is way out of position. The puck is stripped from him, and Makarov with the goal, and the Soviet leads. Makarov, seventh of this tournament. So the green unit strikes early, and the Soviet plays. Here's Gretzky shooting it into center ice. Prop couldn't knock it down. And going back to the Soviets, Kumatov, he leaves it there, and here's the new man in the lineup tonight, Igor Kropchuk, clearing it into center ice. Canada's Mario Lemieux dropping it back to Doug Crossman, number two, who fires it out of there. Kropchuk, number 29, this 21 years of age, as a matter of fact, turned 21 today, cleared it in. Canada trying to get it out of there. Soviet pulled it in. Here is a drive just wide by Kumatov. And Canada then clear it out of there. But Dotop, number 14, back for the Soviets. Into center to Kanyansky, number 13. Side step to check. Back on power check. Flipping it in. And the Dotop is there to clear it away. Bork tried to hold it in. Couldn't. Soviets break out of there. In on the left side, Lomakin, number 23, centered it, but it comes all the way back into center ice. Here's Gusarov, number three, flipping it. Bork knocks it down. Bork to Howard Chuck. Dropping it back to Larry Murphy, number eight. Murphy slides it in. And the Soviets, Gusarov, checked by Howard Chuck. Howard Chuck trying to get it to pocket, but he was upended on the play. And the Soviets fire it out of there with Ramo Bork of the Boston Bruins back to get it for Canada. To Dale Howard Chuck, leaving it for Sutter, back to Howard Chuck. Scooped in, and Milnikov caught it and held it, and we'll get a face off. This is the Labatt Canada Cup on CTV. Took only 26 seconds. Sergei Makarov from Karutov, who is the one who stripped the puck from Doug Crossman behind the net and bent it quickly in front. 26 seconds. Soviets leading 1 0. Now Canada with a line of Doug Gilmore, Mario Lemieux, and Fred Sutter. And Chinoff and Gilmore on the faceoff. Gilmore gets it to Brent Sutter. Centered to Lemieux to Gilmore. Shoots and Milnikov went to his knees to rob Gilmore. Canada's best chance thus far. 
So be it. Take possession and fire it out of there. Ema left into center ice. Trying to get it ahead for Priyanka. Fuhrer away out of the net to clear it. And he cleared it up over the glass and into the crowd. And then some bumping on the boards by Humalap and Sutter after the whistle. Well, Brent Sutter raising a little hop with Don Koharski. Two Stanley Cup winners for Sutter. He won't feel the pressure at all in a game of this moment. Of course, also part of the Canada Cup in 1984 and a big star for Canada in the 84 Canada Cup. Just 25 years of age and seven seasons already in the NHL. Part of a very sure big cast. a few brothers across <laughs> North America watching this one tonight. Let's see, there'd be Dwayne and Daryl in Chicago, Brian in St. Louis. Who am I missing? Rich Duran. Plus... Mom and Dad and the rest of the Sutters from Viking, Alberta. Puck is cleared on the ice. Here's Doug Gilmore chipping it in. Lemieux went in after it. And Chinoff tied him up. And now Patisov loses it. Rochefort couldn't get it. And Kostatonov feeds it into center ice for Himalap. Himalap drops pass back. And Chinoff couldn't control it. Now Priyakin can't center it. Priyakin still after it. Gets it to number eight. Himalap back on the point. Shot and by Nanchinov is blocked and Canada come to center. Gretzky firing it in. Back to get it. Pass the donut. That's Lemieux stealing it, but Nanchinov was there to brat it away. And the Soviets take over and Batisov cleared it into center ice. This is Doug Crossman back near his own blue line to Coffee. Back to Crossman. Crossman puts it near the line. Shot right back out by Krobchuk, the Newcomer in the Soviet lineup tonight, and that's Bison against the Soviets. This is the Levant Canada Cup on CTV. Well, there's the latest energy saving device. He applauded so loudly and long the other night, he brought his own <laughs> applauder tonight. One nothing, the Soviets leading. And Larionov from deep in the Soviet zone. The center, three on two break, led by Larionov to Makarov. Shoots, you're the save. And he passed that rebound away with a big goal set. Back come Canada, Glenn Anderson, number nine. Anderson trying to drop it back, still no intercepts. Right back, he comes the other way to Karuta. And it's Crossman clearing it. Makarov held it in. Now he's slammed into the boards by Messier and Crossman. Feeds it over, and Rochefort shot at the center. Back is Stelno. Off the boards to Larionov. Back to Stelno. Fired it out. Gartner tried to knock it down. Here's Krutov to Larionov. He's checked him back the other way. Comes Howard Chuck. Cutting right in. Wide by a little foot. Big burst of speed by Howard Chuck. And Gusarov has it for the Soviets. He tried to clear it. Bork held it in. Shot. Deflected it just wide. And Karutov slaps it down the ice to relieve the pressure. And icing against the Soviets. Well, Howard Chuck with a very, very big chance. And you notice the march he got on the defenseman. He underrate Howard Chuck's speed a little bit sometimes. But this time he really got loose and he just beat the defenseman to the net and then just shot it a bit wide. Stole the puck at center ice. The defenseman now has turned around on the play. That's Stelno up there, and now he's got a big jump on him, man. Howard Chuck probably had a little bit of room to get around the defenseman and get directly in front of the goal, but he thought he was going to be under a little more pressure than he, in fact, was. Shot quicker than he wanted to and missed by about five inches. Mike Keenan must feel Howard Chuck is hot. He leaves him out there with Gretzky and Lemieux, and the Soviets clear it to center ice. Bork back to get it to Gretzky. Over to Howard Chuck. Into Lemieux, who gets pulled down by Bekoff. And Bekoff will get the game's first penalty. And Canada will have a power play. This is the Levant Canada Cup on CTV. Bekoff is off for interference at 4.59. When you take a scoring chance away, it has to be called. And... There you see it right at the bottom of your screen. Mario Lemieux would have been free. The chance on bowling for Canada. Bekoff just hauled his man down. The penalty had to be called. Here's Coffee to Gretzky. Canada with the man advantage. Back to Coffee. 
Over onto the other point, Bork centered it. Was too hard for Gretzky to knock down. And now the puck comes back into Canada's zone with Toppy back to gut. To Mark Messier. Leaving it there, and here is Bork to Toppy to Lemieux. Mario Lemieux trying to get it to Bork. Comes to Gretzky. Gretzky in the slot. Standard oh, and Messier just failed to tip it in. Now behind the net to Lemieux. Mario Lemieux, number 66 to Gretzky. Back to Toffy. Into Lemieux, but intercepted by Kostatonov. And the Soviets, shorthanded, come to center up. Kostatonov doing a good job. Cleared it in, and Bork is back to get it. A minute eight left in the Soviets' penalty. Bork to Coffey. Soviets have scored a shorthanded goal in each of the three games against Canada, so keep that in mind. He shoot it in. Fatisov back to get it, firing it out of there. And Bork will have to chase back. 50 seconds left in the penalty. Bork just slaps it in. And Milnikov out of the goal, handed it right to Anderson. Now to Gretzky. Gretzky cutting in, trying to center. Still no broke it up. Now Gretzky out in front. In front, Goulet shot, rebound. Blocked out by Anderson, and Milnikov got a piece of that. And it's cleared away. Again, the puck artistry and the playmaking of Gretzky. Here is Coffey. Into Gretzky. Trying to hit Goulet in the slot. Soviets clear it. Knocked down by Hartsburg. To Gretzky. In front, Goulet offended in the slot. And Gusarov comes out of there. Two on one. Soviet break. Coffey trying to get back. Here's the shot. Off the goal post. Oh, and Gusarov. Now they put the red light on. I think it went in the net. Gusarov indicated he had scored, but the red light did not come on. Then it did. And let's see what Koharski rules here. They're signaling the face off at center ice. Right. I thought it went in the net and came out. But the light did not go on, and then it came on very briefly and went out again. Koharski has signaled there's a goal, and we've got a... Well, let's take a look at it here now. Off the post, right there, and right inside the net. So it went all the way around and came back out. So you're right, it hit a post, but then rattled around inside the cage before coming out. Two to nothing, the Soviets lead. Here's James Patrick trying to feed it to Doug Gilmore. Poked away by Milna Cop, Sutter in to get it, and now Prigokin, number 22, into center to Chinop, number 12. And that's offside at the blue line. Pumalev in ahead of the play. This is the Labatt Canada Cup on CTV. This program is protected by copyright. Any use of this telecast without permission is prohibited. Two to nothing, the Soviets lead that last scoring play. Gusarov unassisted at 7.04, just after the Soviet player, five seconds after he had come back onto the ice from serving a penalty, so it wasn't a shorthanded goal. But an early jump for the Soviets, a 2 nothing lead. Here's Fatisov clearing it into center ice. Messier knocks it down. Got it into the corner, Batisov, now to Makarov, to Larionov. Larionov leaving it for Karutov. He's checked by Anderson, and Anderson and Gardner try and wedge it out of there on the boards, but play is halted, and the faceoff will come at the Team Canada blue line. Uh, brought back in over the line with players trap as we look at Glenn Anderson, bothered by a knee injury early, and that's maybe the first good body check of the period as he nails Karutov right up against the boards there. Puck came out over the line, came back in, and that produced the whistle. Shots on goal. Canada with five, Soviet Union three. It scored on two of the three. Here's Makara. Makara beating Fatisov, closing in. Shoots, he scores! Fatisov from Makara. It's 3-0 for the Soviets. Oh, the mastery and the wizardry of Makarov, who hung on to that puck, hung on to that puck, and then just gave it right here. And the overloading of the zone with Fatisov coming in, he was at a clear path to the net, and it's three to nothing. 
And Canada is in shock here at the eight minute mark. The Soviets have just completely scored on everything. So Fatisov, on every chance that they have had, they have scored. Three to nothing, the Soviets play. Canada in game one came from behind a 4 1 deficit to tie it, but it was much later. Here are the Soviets who are off to the quick start, feeding to Kamiensky. Kamiensky, number 13, trying to move in. He gets knocked around. Now Bekoff, checked by Howard Chuck before he could shoot. Bekoff again. To Stelno. Hartsburg trying to tie him up. Stelno still with it. Gets it in front. Fewer of the save. And then Lemieux cleared it. Gretzky dropping it back. And it's back to Gretzky. Gretzky for Canada. Leaves it for Lemieux. Here's Lemieux. To Gretzky. Demario Lemieux. Lemieux for Canada. And long reach, trying to go to a one-handed move, loses it, and Benyanov had it for the moment. Canada still hold it in. Gretzky looks for Lemieux. Lemieux to Gretzky, and that's broken up. And now Lemieux shoots Gretzky at the edge of the crease, couldn't tip it in. And the Soviets break up. But now back to the play, a penalty goal for cross-checking against the Soviet Union. And Canada get a bit of a break there because the Soviets were breaking up two on one. I'm not sure if penalty was called on 99. Gretzky with the one side of the net, the other side of the net was knocked to the ice. Canada guilty of overhandling the puck a little bit. Gretzky, what a chance. Simply just, well, he was covered up very quickly right at the side of the net. As Semyonov came over. And there's Gretzky going down under the checking. And Kravchuk, the young defenseman, picks up the minor. And Canada really has to score here. Three to nothing, the Soviets leading. Makarov, Gusarov, and then Batisov from Makarov on their third goal. Here's Goharski, the referee, and another tribute to him, the Soviets, agreeing to a Canadian official in this game, which usually these neutral officials operate, at least for neutral countries. All officials are neutral, right, Ron? Exactly. All NHL officials seem to be. Canada on the power play. They're 0 for 1 in this game tonight with the man advantage, and they're down by 3. Now Messier. Over to Murphy. Murphy moving in, and Canada goes offside at the Soviet blue line. Mark Messier on the far side getting in a little too quickly. The penalty to Kravchuk at 9-10 for cross-checking. Look at Mark Messier. What a first period he had the other night. Set the tone of the game with his hitting, his speed. And while he seemed to slowly run out of steam, he really picked up his own teammates. See him on the bench. He's a clear leader, not only the Edmonton Oilers, but Team Canada as well. Canada with the man advantage. Bork and Murphy, the point men, with Anderson, Goulet, and Pocket up front. Puck dumped in by Bork. Now Anderson digs in against Batisov. The car off there to clear it. Knocked down by Canada. Here's Murphy. Shoots the end of the same rebound. Pocket down! No finesse at all. Murphy again gets it in the slot. This time he elected to shoot. It got behind Molnikov and Tocket trailing on the play picked up the loose puck. I thought that Team Canada was guilty of overhandling the puck a lot. Just get the shot, go in and look for rebounds. That's the way you play the game over here. And Tocket was there. Got the rebound, and Canada's getting got a very important goal on the power play. Rick Tocket gets the goal, his third of this series. Goulet will get an assist, this will Murphy. Here's Canada with Murphy leading the attack, trying to get it to Anderson, broken up, and home attack number 15. Homatov into center ice, gets it to Beckoff, number 27. Now to Homatov, back to Beckoff. 
He's upended by Sutter, and Brent Sutter will get a penalty here. And now Canada will be shorthanded, holding against Sutter. This is the Levac Canada Cup on CTV. Sutter goes off for holding just seconds after Canada had gotten on the board. That's Beckoff, number 27, and he just got the clutch put on him by Sutter. Not an opportune penalty. Canada trying to get some momentum going. Trailing 3-1 to one in the game. Canada's really got the edge in terms of offense. They just haven't been able to get Molnikov. 10-5 to five shots on goal right now for Team Canada. But 3-1 for the Soviets. Canada able to clear it out of there. The Dotop back to get it into his own zone. Now dropping it back to the Dotop again as Kamienski gave it to him. Return to Kamienski, number 13. To Bekov, number 27. To Hobotop, number 15. Now to Padotov, and his pass across to Gusarov, tipped away by Messier. Gusarov over to Bekov, drops it, Hobotov checked, and here's Gilmore for Canada. Gartner shoots right on. Love save Milnikov as Gilmore put Gartner in on the right side. Back comes Bekov to Hobotov. Hobotov around Rockford moving in. Gilmore trying to tie him up. Now to Patisov at the point. Back on the boards. Soviets with the power play. Behind the net, put right through the crease and Kasatonov missed it at the edge of the crease and now Homotov down on the ice and shaken up and that's why play has been halted. Rather desperate situation for Team Canada as Gartner has been playing that whole sequence without a stick. The stick line broken down on the ice. Homotov went down to the side of the net with that little shot, which was something more than just a little shot. Get in front of the net. They're prepared to pay the price a little bit. Oh, Homotov goes to the bench. Seven season veteran. And his third Canada Cup. Like Beckoff, very small and shifty, but quite a hockey player. They call him the Soviet rat, huh? <laughs> I know the. We never told him. I know the hit was a little illegal, but the fall was rather dramatic as well. Yeah. Well, you see, Bill Barber played. They learned a few things. Three to one, Soviets leading. 57 seconds left in Canada's penalty. Nasa Tonop back to get it. Duke Karutov. Into Larianov. And that play is offside at the Soviet blue line. Good check at the line. Kavrutov took a good shot. This is a good, clean hit. This is what hockey's about. Boom. Two tough guys because Kavrutov, he'll take those checks and come right back at you. But so will Messier. Drain number 11. <laughs> he is strong. The guy, the guy was on his way back to his feet. The whistle went on the offside. Still 44 seconds left in Canada's penalty to Sutter. Messier out there against Larianov on this faceoff. Well, those two fellows have got to know each other very well during this 1987 Canada Cup. Well, Larianov just gets to know Messier a little bit better as he gives him a jab from the faceoff. Bork trying to clear it, but Tisot held it in. Got blocked by Bork to Anderson. Anderson tied up by Patisov. Now knocked away from Anderson. And Canada having to drop back with Larry Murphy. Murphy loses to Makarov, but as soon as Makarov touched the puck, it was called on a delayed offside. Very smart play by Murphy. He knew he had the free pass on the delayed whistle, so he circled back inside his own zone. Moment of Soviet touched the puck, the whistle was going to go anyway, so he killed off some precious seconds. And the power play situation for the Soviet now is down to 21 seconds. Now Murphy, knowing there's a delayed whistle here, circles back. Killed off four, five, six seconds. Maybe the difference. Finally, Makarov moved in and checked him. 21 seconds left in the penalty. Hartsburg for Canada. Clears it away. Gilmore and Gartner are up front. With Rochefort and Hartsburg on defense. Here's Gartner trying to center. Intercepted by Stelno. Now the same act, number 18. Same act shot off of Hartsburg. 
Rashford beats Semyonov to it, clearing it. There's Kropchuk pinching in to Semyonov. Now Lomak in back of the net with Semak. Semak trying to center to Lomak. Back to Skelno. Shooting, that's just wide. Bounced in front and Gilmore couldn't get it out of there. Semyonov held it in. Lomakin has it, but now Brent Sutter out of the penalty box. Canada back at full strength. And here's Sutter trying to break away. Sutter gets knocked down. Gretzky follows up. Cleared it in. Delno. Bumped by Gretzky. Delno flipping it. And into center ice. Samak loses. And here's Howard Chuck trying to get it to Lemieux. Samak to Lomakin and Coppy took it away from him. Trying to get it to Gretzky. Lomakin intercepts. And the Soviets with Kravchuk shoot it into Canada's zone. Muir clears it out. Here's Lemieux. Into Howard Chuck. Usarov back to get it. Clearing it out onto the boards. Priyakin shoots it to center. Rossman over for Coffey. Now to Gretzky. Ahead on the wing for Howard Chuck. And that's intercepted by Priyakin. Canada again in control. Stick handling in neatly as Howard Chuck to Lemieux, but offside is the play at the Soviet Blue Line. This is the Levac Canada Cup on CTV. Uh, the fans are up for it here in Hamilton, Ontario. Really enjoying an absolute sellout. They had a big lineup here at the Cup Coliseum yesterday morning. The final tickets were gobbled up in very short order. The scalpers have been having a field day ever since. Reminder, during our first intermission, Doug Gilmore is going to be around. We'll have some highlights of the first two games of this championship round. Set to music. They're pretty spectacular, too. Brad Park will have his highlights on the Toyota scoreboard with Dan Kelly. Here's Team Canada now, 3-1. to one. Michelle Goulet firing it in. And Petisov back to get it. Petisov to Bekov. Now to Kaminsky. Kaminsky upended, but clears it to Team Canada's line. Coffey fired it back out. Here's Kaminsky. Over to Homotap, number 15. He just dumps it in. Murphy back for Canada. Murphy missing Coffey with a pass. Here's Bekov to Homotap. Homotap flips it in. Now, Fuhr giving it to Gretzky, winding it around under the boards. Petisov pinching in. Petisov centered, loose in front. Canada come up with it, and here's Lemieux to Gretzky. Gretzky with Lemieux. Upended on the play is Gretzky, and Petkoff has it. Now, Prop holding it in. And the zone on back to get Right in front of his own goal to Petisov. And the Soviet veteran defenseman Petisov to Makarov to Petkoff. Back to Makarov, right in. Muir came out and made a big save. As Makarov was right in at the doorstep. Now a pass to Tockett misses him. And the tone off back to get it. Almost stolen by Canada on the play as Prop got his stick on it. Now here's Bork from center ice firing it in. Back to Stelno. Into court deck is Tockett. Rick Tockett. Gets some help from Brent Sutter out in front. They Brian Trump hits it in. I think it may have gone off his skate. It was fired across the goal mouth. Well, it was a bad start for Canada, but they're back in it. Trump is on the goal side at this side of the net. Here's a closer view. Prop is number 26. Looks to the right of the net. Now he moves into position. Out comes Sutter. Throws it across. Don't get cute. That's the story of the two goals for Team Canada. All they've done. Talking again with a great job for checking. Produced the puck. And Prop gets credit for the goal. Brian Prop at 1523 here in the first period. The cut the Soviets lead to three to two. Taka gets an assist. As of course is Brent Sutter. 
15-23 the time. Soviet lead has been cut to three to two. Here's James Patrick in across the line to Messier to Gartner. Milnikov a save and Gusarov clears it to Lomakin who shot at the center. Patrick giving it to Messier. Fired in. Going back, big Gusarov takes the hit from Gartner on the play. And now Semyonov at center. Into Seymour. Seymour trying to move in. Does shoot. Save by Fjord on Seymour. And then he sputtered it. This is the Levant Canada Cup on CTV. Mike Gardner on a delayed whistle laid the check of the game. Right here as he just leveled. Well, he didn't level him, but he sure came up against the boards on Gusarov, who's a pretty solid guy. Gartner, who played hurt through the first part of this tournament, a very sore wrist, which wouldn't allow him to shoot the puck to any great extent, and that is part of his game. But he told me this morning that the problem is now cured. It hasn't really been bothering him too much. It's still sore, but at least he can control his stick. There's Messier. Uh, Feelings are running high a bit. That probably followed something else. Almost off there. Mchinov on a face-off against Brent Sutter. Deep in Canada's zone. 407 left in the period. But he's off at the point. Gate saved by Fjord, and then the rebound is just poked away. Ryakin couldn't get it in front, and here's Brent Sutter to board. Now tipped by Hartsburg. And fired in by Tockett. Tockett has scored for Canada and set up another. Here's Tockett with a shot wide of the net. Bork flipping it in. And he flipped it up over the boards at the Soviet bench. So some of the grinders, such as Rick Tockett, playing hurt but coming through big for Canada. Well, I don't know who got the worst of this, but Sutter and Tockett... I think Tockett probably took the brunt of that check, which was originally intended for Kasatonov back there. Tockett coming to the bench to shake it off a little bit. There's Tockett there. Tockett and Sutter just arriving at the bench. Boy, that Tockett for a guy who's supposed to have a tender knee is really doing it. He's scored a goal. He's assisted on a goal, started the play in the corner when he dug the puck loose and got it to Sutter. It led to Prop's goal that has made it a 3-2 hockey game. Here's Gretzky, Lemieux, and Anderson now for Canada. Coffee and Murphy on the fence. Soviets with their line of Bekov, Kamiensky, and Homotov up front. Play just underway. Canada shooting it in. Back to get it. Here's Lemieux stealing it in front to Anderson as Lemieux beat Prop stuck to the puck. Now Anderson. Side of the net to Lemieux. And Mildecott came out and cleared it. Gretzky to Murphy. Murphy shoots up high into the crowd. Murphy. Wayne and Mario show starting to gear up. Murphy had his had to do that all over again. He would have wished that the puck had come through the stick flat. I think he had a bouncing, rolling puck. He had to cradle first and then tee it up. And then, of course, the defenseman was able to, to move over. Talking about Gretzky, or as we look at Murphy, talking about Gretzky and Lemieux, who now lead the ice, I guess you could say Gretzky loads the gun and Mario pulls the trigger. That's about it. That uh, probably is the best way to describe it. Here's Canada on the faceoff. Patrick firing it around over to pick it up to Starov, out to Makarov. Leaving it there for Fedotov, number 14. Arianov cleared it in, but it's offside as Kirukov was in ahead of the play. Shots on goal continue to be two to one favor Canada, 16 to eight now. Canada with a total of 16 shots already in this game with 2.57 remaining in the first period. Gretzky the captain. No, two different times, Ron, I've seen Wayne Gretzky get five goals in a game. I think the best game I've ever seen him play was the other night. He didn't have a goal. He had five assists and was all over the place. Five straight assists. There's a high stick. Makarov on and an inadvertent one on that. Uh, when Anderson was turning at the boards and Puck seemed to, you can see Makarov's reaction. He, stick seemed to ride up on the 
stick of Anderson, cut him across the face, and there's going to be a high sticking call. Makara, a good call. Now here it is. They're still responsible for your stick, and if it gets up above the shoulders, then you have to pay the price, no matter whether it's accidental or not. Canada goes on the power play. Canada one for two with the man advantage in this game. Canada's 10th power play goal of the Canada Cup. So Canada with Lemieux, Messier, and Gretzky up front. Coffee and Bork, the point men. Here's Coffee to Messier. Leaving it for Lemieux. He left it there for Messier. Into Lemieux, back of the net to Gretzky. On the point to Bork. And then broken up by Lariana and tipped out the center. Bork has to hustle back. 2.20 left of the first period. 3-2 Soviet. Bork to Messier. Back to Bork. Ahead to Gretzky and he just tips it in. Now Lemieux behind the goal. Rukov couldn't get it. Lemieux back to Bork. Around to the other side to Gretzky. Trying to tip it to Messier. And the Soviets get it. Poppy held it in. His shot wide. Here's Lemieux. To Bork. To Coffey. Over to Gretzky. Back to Coffey. Other side to Bork. Shot blocked by Becca. Bork with 49 seconds left in the penalty to Coffey. Six save. Milvica. Gretzky to Coffey. Over to Lemieux. Couldn't handle a pass to Messier. He lets it go to Gretzky. On the point to Bork. Over to Coffey. Now to Bork with 30 seconds left in the penalty. Back to Coffey. Over to Gretzky. Soviet playing that box. Side of the net to Messier. Back to Gretzky. Now to Coffey. Shoot it. Hill the cop save. And Mario Lemieux couldn't get the rebound. Now he does. To Messier. Messier shoots from a bad angle. Thought the Tonoff blocked that. We're in the final minute of the period. Four seconds left in the penalty. Gretzky to Coffey. Over to Bork. Penalized player back on. Bork lets the shot go. Blocked. And Karutov cleared it. Now Bork a shot. Gretzky to flex. Off the goal post for that one. And the Soviet Makarov clearing the center. Bork back to get it. Bork loses. it. Omatov in the clear. Homatov on a breakaway. And the Soviets at a late goal take a 4-2 lead here in the first period. Well, we got back to the problem that I think that Team Canada was in in the early stages of the period. They tried to get too cute. And here's Homatov all alone and nearly a great save by Grant Fjord, but it trickled over the line. Puck was just stripped away as falling on the play was Bork and Homotov had the clear path. But going back to the power play, it's so almost like when you get Gretzky and Messier or, and uh, also Lemieux out there, they want to score the perfect goal. Take a look at the two goals that have been scored for Team Canada tonight. It's been on sheer muscle and throw it in front of the net and bang it into the net. And now we've had Gretzky and Lemieux score great goals in this tournament, but there they were almost like they were looking for the perfect and perfect goal and they certainly didn't get it because the Soviets had played the box perfectly. Now Canada down by two again. 17 seconds left in the period. Drop in there digging on the board. Soviets able to clear it and Rochefort has to go back. Rochefort just scooping it into center ice and it goes up over the boards at the Team Canada bench with four seconds left in the first period. Home atop unassisted 1932 the time of that goal. Well, we've got one of those games again, and don't go away because we've seen leads before disintegrate and go away. And the Soviets had their 3 0 lead reduced to 3 2. There's the long shot that Milnikov handles, and he heads to the locker room with his team leading 4 2. 
Shots on goal in the period. Canada outshot the Soviets 19 to 9, but the Soviets scored four goals on those nine shots and some pretty glaring errors that led to the goal. There's the way it has been in Canada Cup since the beginning, way back in 1976. And 76, of course, Canada played the Soviet Union only once, and that was in the preliminary round. Czechoslovakia played Canada in the final. 1981, there was a 7-3 victory in the regular, the preliminary round, but then in that final, a disastrous 8-1 victory for the Soviet Union. 1984, 6-3 Soviets in the preliminary round, but then Canada in that wonderful overtime game in the semifinal. And, of course, here in 1987, dead even through three games. And now we're into the second period of the fourth game. And immediately, Canada clear the puck into the Soviet zone. Makarov is there, number 24. Back he comes, trying to go around Patrick. Tipped away by Canada, and Fuhr away out of the net to clear that. Here's Patisov trying to hold it in. And again, it's Rochefort with a lead pass to Messier. Pass to Tonoff and Messier. There's... Messier trying to center, was tipped away, and Kasatonov gives it to Makarov, who speeds in on left wing. Patrick takes him out of the play. Gartner cleared it. Here's Karutov, centering back. Larry on off to Patisov. Six save pure on Patisov. Patisov still with it for the Soviets. Got it in front, batted away by Rochefort. Now Patrick, number six, from the New York Rangers, leaving it for Rochefort. Up the middle to Gartner, chipped in, and shot right back out by number 29, Probchuk, into center ice. Here's Karutov moving in, Hartsburg dives to break it up. Now drops back, and Probchuk is checked by Prop. Gretzky breaks away with Pocket, two on one. Gretzky to Pocket, fanned on it from about 20 feet out. Now Prop after the loose puck, and it's Homatov breaking out of there. Home top number 15, bumped off the puck. Prop drops it back. Toffee clearing one. And Prop Chuck goes back to try and clear it and does. Back off. Now oh, it's called on an offside at the Soviet blue line. And that's the way the second period begins. There's Paul Coffey, been very strong throughout this tournament. Again, his speed is so much a part of his game. The two-time Norris Trophy winner. Quite often he is paired with fellas who have controlled the Norris Trophy the last three years. It was Ray Bork won it in 1987. Canada down by 4-2. to Coffey living it for Fred Hartsburg. Lift at the center. Prop is checked. Now Coffey picks it up. Canada playing catch up. Coffey to Gretzky knocked away from him and Here's Samak feeding one to Beckoff, moves in, shoots, Fjord just got a slug on it, rebound, Beckoff a shot, Fjord stops that and cleared it away. And Pocket feeds Gretzky, that's knocked away. Kamienski now for the Soviets, firing it back in. Toffee back to pick it up. Paul Toffee leads the four-man Canada rush. But don't stop there to clear it, Toffee. Holding his ground on the boards against Fedotov. Gretzky comes in to try and pry it loose. And finally it's held for a face-off. This is the Labatt Canada Cup on CTV. Some interesting strategy here by Mike Keenan. Looks like the second period begins. He's split up Gretzky and Lemieux. And Lemieux is now out there with Sutter and Gulen. Semyonov against Lemieux on the faceoff. And the Soviets break out of there. Well, back in number 23 against Bork. Bork rides him out of the play. Bork clearing it up to Michelle Gula. Got the center. Gusarov over to Fedotov. Out of Semyonov, number 30. Fires it in. Samak in after it. Samak to Lomaka. Shot off a skate wide. Here's Samyanov. He's checked, and here's Lemieux. Has Goulet and Sutter with him. Broken up. Sutter the trailer. Centered it, but shot away by Gusarov for the Soviets. Pure scooping it up on the boards to Murphy. Murphy shot up the center. Fatisov intercepts there. And gives it to number eight, Kumala. At center now to Batisov. 
Offended by Bork on the play. Priyakin into the corner, but Batisov cleared it around. Toss a tone off to Priyakin. Brent Sutter ties him up, and Larry Murphy has it. He gives it to Bork. Back on the wing, Sutter shot at the center. Intercepted by Priyakin. Bork trying to ride him up. Priyakin and Bork now in Kina. Knocked down back to the net by Howard Chuck. Here's Kovalev trying to center him. Gina to Priyakin. And he skated off, and Gretzky trying to chip it up. Soviets hold it in. Here comes Gretzky. Neat move, Gretzky. Looking to make a play. Gretzky still with it. Checked from behind by Kovalev, who's able to shoot it out of there. And going back is Hartsburg. To Coffey, into center ice to Gilmore, but Karutov intercepts. He drops it back to Casatona. Fired up the middle, and here is Lariana. Hartsburg breaks that up. Feeding Anderson to Messier. Back to Anderson, Casatona cleared it. Messier to Anderson. Back on the boards, Karutov. As Larionov and Makarov with him, a three-on-three -three break. Pass to Makarov, flipped in front. Rutov was there, but couldn't make the deflection. Anderson for Canada. Got it outside the line, carried back in offside by the Soviets. This is the Levant Canada Cup on CTV. It would appear that Mike Gardner's assignment is Sergei Makarov. Now take a look at this little play with the knee. Now, Makarov got up and made a play right after that, but he took him out of the play long enough that he wasn't clear when he got up. He wound up with the puck, got the puck wide of the net. Now Lemieux out there with prop and pocket for Canada. Here's Rochefort flipping it into center ice, and the newcomer Kropchuk is there to shoot it back up. Now controlled by Stelnob, number four. They head on to the wing. Here's Kamiensky moving in, trying to center to Homotop. Broken up in Canada's Crossman cleared it. Prop sliding it all the way down the ice. And it's grabbed by Milnikov. As then Stelnov and Lemieux bump into each other after the whistle. Well, Coffey, who had his problems over a period of time with his skates, adjusting them once again. Four to two, the Soviets leading Canada. This is more his shin guard than his skates. Last year, he had a dreadful time. It was through the first part of the season. Just couldn't find a pair of skates that fit him properly. He's in a slump. Got over that and, of course, finished strongly and led his team to a Stanley Cup. Now Canada with a forward line of Howard Chuck, Goulet, and James Patrick up front. Normally a defenseman. Rossford and Crossman on defense. Howard Chuck gets the draw. Shot by Rossford to flex just wide. Well, the top took no chance as it came off the backboards and just smothered it. Well, one thing when you've got a defenseman up on your forward line, in a faceoff in the offensive zone, he's the kind of guy who can go right into that goal mouth area. He's used to the traffic in there, and he has to has to face that kind of traffic defending his own zone. There's a young player who's shown a lot of promise in this tournament. Anatoly Fedotov. Be around for a long time. Plays for Moscow Dynamo. He's 21 years of age. I think taking off is intense. Yeah. Here's a drive by Canada. Rockspur. Let it go. Milnikov making the stop. Back of the net. Gusarov trying to clear it out of there. And it's carried out by Lomakin, number 23. Crossman checked him. Now Fedosa. Wide with that shot. And Rockford takes Homotov out of the play with a tough check. Canada can't get it out. Semyonov holding it in. Well wide with that shot. Now cleared in by Fedotov, and Rockford has it for Canada. Rockford up the middle to Howard Chuck. He's upended, and he's hurt as Gusarov caught him right at center ice. And Howard Chuck is shaken up. And now Gusarov goes down. I didn't see what happened to him. This is the Levant Canada Cup on CTV. Dale Howard Chuck, very 
upset at the hit he took from Gusarov in the center ice zone. Then Gusarov was nailed by Rochefort afterwards as a retaliatory measure. Koharski didn't see that. He was looking at the original incident, and this is why Fatisov is arguing. Watch to the left of your screen here. You'll see in the center ice zone, our Chuck is need perhaps by Gusarov. Then as Gusarov went down to defend in his own zone, he was nailed by Rochefort and went down himself. There's Gusarov. Another good young defenseman of this team, 23 years of age. No penalties on either play. Soviets four, Canada two. Soviets led 3-1 after the first period of game one. Made it 4-1. Canada came back eventually to tie it. Game two, Canada led 3-1 after one, and the Soviets came back to tie it. The two goals with these teams, differential after one period, not proving to be that much. Here's Hartsburg decking Himmelak with a check as he caught him with his head down. Now Priyakin racing in. Canada starting to throw their weight around. And it's shot out by Tocket down the ice. Konstantinov going back to death. And it's icing called against Canada. Well, a couple of great hits. Hartsburg was the one that started it. And Hartsburg in a foul mood with the scoreboard rating 4-2. Somebody to well, said something to him, but he good clean hit in the center ice zone. And then a couple of hits down on the Team Canada zone. Here it comes right to your screen. He nailed him. Stood him straight up, sat him straight down. And they're going to have to do a little more of that. Looks like they're getting a little mad, and I think probably that may be the best thing that could happen to Team Canada. They played the first period a little less than the total enthusiasm. Hit, but they better stay out of the penalty. That's box. right. Keep them clean. Keep the sticks down. There's Crossman for Canada to Gartner. He couldn't get it out. Karutov has it for the Soviets. Over to Makarov. Rockport bumped him hard. And Canada then clear it out of there. Anderson sliding at the center ice. Now Fatisov passing it up on the wing to Karutov. Rockport back to get it. Messier, Anderson, and Gartner up front. Here's Messier leaving it for Anderson. He's checked, and Makarov breaks away with only Ross for back. He has Karutov with him to Karutov. Shoot, hold pure. Just got a piece of that, and it trickled off to the corner. And Crossman has it for Canada. Delno pinching in. Now Messier. Messier loses. Makarov trying to carry back in. Crossman tying it up. And a jam up in the corner. Rossmore coming up with it. Flips it out. And hits the car off as he was going to the bench. Now Frostman cleared once. Elno jammed in there by Anderson. And it's held. And we get a stoppage in play. This is the Levant Canada Cup on CTV. On the right there is Larry Anoff. On the left with Karutov. But it's Makarov who paved the way for this play. And the shot by Karutov just trickled through and behind. Boy, they have been dangerous. Especially in this game, Dan Makarov. He is having a great hockey game. When they get a scoring chance, it's a dandy. They seem to be wide open. And that's why the shots on goal don't very mean very much. The chances they're getting. Back top, flipping it in. Fewer there to clear it. Lemieux couldn't get it. Still no held it in. Warren blocked his shot. Flips it up the middle. And it's shot back in by the Soviets. Now Lemieux and Gretzky are out on the forward line back together with Prop, the other member of that trio. Here comes Murphy into Lemieux. Lemieux cutting in. Lemieux trying to center, does to Bork. Bork got it in front. Gretzky in front. And Lemieux was up And there'll be a penalty to Beckham as he tripped Lemieux at the side of the net. And a Canada power play coming right up. Beckham to the penalty box. This is the Labatt Canada Cup on CTV. Piazza Beckoff goes off for tripping Mario Lemieux. A great chance here. Watch Gretzky. 
Here is the puck rolling loose. Gretzky gets a little bit of a piece of it and rolls it. I don't know how he got that pass away. And then Beckoff just nailed Lemieux in the goal mouth area. And that drew the tripping penalty. It's the second time that Lemieux has drawn a penalty in this game. As they draw a penalty, his check has taken a penalty trying to handle it. So at 8.24, Canada goes on the power play, and the crowd here is starting to pick it up once again. Gretzky up front with Lemieux and Pocket, Murphy, and Bork will be the point man. Canada one for three on the power play tonight. Trailing four to two, but with a chance here. And now Gretzky. Wanted to talk to someone, I believe. Well, he's about showing the, uh, the linesman that something's on the ice. And now he's going to go over and discuss things while the linesmen are busy. With Mike Keenan. One thing he can do is just kind of. Uh, here are the scoring leaders up to date in the tournament. Gretzky three points ahead of Lemieux. Makarov having a big night tonight is close to within a point of Lemieux. And Karutov with 14 points now. Nicely balanced seven goals and seven assists. Here's Messier to, or at least Gretzky to talk it. Couldn't get a stick on it. Gretzky again. Tries to center. Lemieux was open but fanned on it. And the Soviets come back, led by Lomaka. Two on, two break. Murphy there to use the poke check. And ties up Lomakin. And Lomakin trying to freeze it. Murphy gets it loose. Larry Murphy. Fires it in. Gretzky comes in. It comes to Murphy. Back to Bork. Into Lemieux. Soviets go into that box. They drop it to Bork. A drive and a save by Milnikov. And he held it. Big thing about this line, the way they've got it now with Lemieux and Gretzky, they've added Tockett to the line. And Tockett's the man. He's the designated slot man. He's in there to cause problems for Milnikov. Good play here, then this is the difference. They're getting the shot away now with Tockett right in front of the net. Gretzky swooping in, looking for any kind of a rebound himself. He's a very important guy in this game so far, Rick Tockett. He's played a lot of roles, but most of them are the physical roles. And he's been very much responsible for the two goals that Canada has. Points on both of them. Tockett from Scarborough, Ontario, a key member of the Philadelphia Flyers. 120 left in the penalty. Now Gretzky over to question the referee for Harsky about something. Soviets wrong to me tonight when they're shorthanded are playing the box and not playing as aggressively in a shorthanded situation as they did earlier. They don't want to let them uh, get too much of that game in close. Here's Bork for Canada. Into Lemieux. Back to Bork. Over onto the wing to Murphy. Centered. Tipped away by Makarov. Lemieux. Back of the net to Gretzky. In front to Murphy. Shoots. He scores! <laughs> oh, play with it. Shoot it. What happened was the defense got spread out here. Pocket. They started worrying about Pocket at the side of the net. Murphy wound up getting the puck at the side. As the defense was going the wrong way on the short side, he put it in. But whether that shot had been blocked or not, it certainly paved the way for a good rebound. And as it was, it found the hole. And Canada trails by just a goal. Another great setup by Gretzky as Murphy gets his first of the Canada Cup. Comes with 10.40 left in the second period. The other point goes to Mario Lemieux. No, Gretzky and Lemieux get the assist. Canada within one of the Soviets. Here's Priyakin coming in. Coffee trying to take him out. Back to get it. His pocket feeds it to Gretzky. Delno in to tie him up. And now Gretzky gets it to Coffee. Out for Tocket, but intercepted and shot back in by the Soviets. Coffee back for Canada. Coffee being checked by Priyakin, and Priyakin dumps it in. And now Prop has to go back for Canada. Out on left wing to Gretzky. Over for Hartsburg, off the boards for Prop. 
Ryan Prop number 26, shooting it in. One back to get it. Rob Chuck. Gretzky stole it. Centered. Kanyansky intercepts. Soviets come back. Number 13, Kanyansky. Let's it go, and that's high off the glass. Right back the other way. Canada with Gretzky. The copy to Prop has Sutter with it. Here's the shot high and over the glove of Milnikov. Prop behind the net. Trying to get it to Sutter. Brent Sutter for Canada. Beckoff comes up with it. Now to Homatop. Homatop got it to the line. Rossmore held it in. And Dussarov has it for the Soviets. To Homatop, number 15. Flipped in. Cleared out by Crossman. Now Fedota trying to set up Kaminsky. Back comes Crossman for Canada trying to beat it up to Goulet. Goulet on the left wing board. Slides it around. Into the corner goes Crossman. Now to Howard Chuck. Dale Howard Chuck. Center to shot. They score! Brent Sutter ties this game up. The key to this is look at the traffic in front of the net. Out comes the pass. Everybody going for the net, and Sutter with a great shot off the roof. Howard Chuck is getting it out in front. Sutter moving in. Love side. Couldn't put it in a better spot. Canada comes back to tie it at 4-4. The Soviets at one time led 3-0. Howard Chuck and Crossman will draw assists on this. Here's Howard Chuck out in front. Again, that great shot. The feeling is glove side high on Milnikov. You can beat him. He doesn't have a good glove hand. Brent Sutter's first goal of the tournament. Howard Chuck and Crossman the assist. 11.06 the time. Canada four, the Soviets four. Oh, the crowd starting to take over, too. You can hear them start to build with the Murphy goal. Now they're really going. Got the coach up on top of the bench. Wow. Something has been thrown onto the ice, and that's where, why we're having the delay is one of the... Rink attendant sends out to straight something that's been thrown onto the ice. That gives Mill the top of James to get a breather. Get another look at the goal by Sutter. And again, we talk about the problem that Milnikov has with his glove hand. Our Chuck handling it from behind the net, beats it out in front. And the slow glove. Now, that's a tough shot for anybody to deal with. I don't care, but right now, it put Canada into a 4-4 tie. We'll take a break right now as they clean things up on the ice. This is the Levant Canada Cup on CTV. Canada 4, the Soviet 4, and here we go with 4 flipping it in for Canada. Racing in was Sutter, but it was whistled down on an offside or a high sticking call, I believe, ruling that the Soviets said not to puck down with a high stick. Canada with a 7-4 shot on goal edge in this period, but again, the shots on goal, as Dan mentioned, not a good statistic in this particular game because the Soviets have had so many good scoring, clean scoring chances. They scored three goals on their first four shots. Each of them was a good, clean scoring chance. Now Gilmore, Lemieux, and Sutter, the Canada forward line. Breaking out is Womacken for the Soviets. Both checked by Bork and Lemieux. Right back for Canada. Mario Lemieux trying to leave it there. Knocked down and Semyonov. Right back the other way for the Soviets. Lemieux gets up limping. Now Gilmore back to the goal. Gilmore trying to clear it out. And now we're going to get a penalty. Back of the play is Lemieux. And Kasatonov were making threatening glances of each another. All right, here's the, the play. Now, there's a slash in here, but watch the skate of Kasatonov. And 
and there's the slash across the back of the lane. But I don't think Lemieux appreciated that skate very much. It may have been inadvertent, but it certainly was an area where it could have caused a lot of damage. So the Soviets in this 4-4 game with a man advantage. Slashing against Lemieux. 8.26 left in the second period. Soviets are 0 for 1 with the man advantage tonight. They send down to the green unit. Larianov, Akarov, and Karutov with Batisov and Kasatonov on defense. Canada with Messier and Gartner up front. Soviet with the man advantage. Rossbor from the faceoff. Tries to clear it up. Pinching in for Tisov to Lariana. Lariana to Makara. Kicks it to Karutov and Rossbor checks in. Kostatonov held it in. Over onto the board to Lariana. Back to Kostatonov. Return to Lariana. Now to Fatisov. Shooting. Blocked by Gartner. Fatisov to Karutov. And Gartner breaks it up again. And then cleared it to center up. Couple of key plays defensively by Mike Gartner. Here's Karutov. To Fatisov. Now to Lariana. Lariana flips it in. Karutov cuts in. Big save to a rebound. And that's chopped away by Crossman for Canada. Lariana held it in. His shot blocked by Messier, and Rossmore shoots it away. And a minute left in the penalty, and an interference call as Gardner gets upended. And an interference call coming up here to the Soviets. And to Lariana. Watch the left-hand side of the screen on the replay, and you'll see Gartner, number 12 for Canada, knocked down right in the center right zone as the puck was cleared up ice. Uh, Larry and off. That means that Canada, at the end of the Lemieux penalty, will have a minute and two seconds, barring further penalties. They'll have a minute and two seconds of power play. Here's Krutov. Every time you see these guys, you got to get up on the edge of your seat. What a save that was. And then Kasatonov moving quickly in for the rebound, but he was forced into the corner. Krutov scored a goal in game two in a very similar situation. He came a man short copy to Anderson deflected it. Noel Nikoff made the save and then smothers it. 53 seconds left in Lemieux's penalty, 156 left in Larionov's penalty for the Soviets. What a deflection there by Anderson, taking that shot from the point by Coffey, and it, all he did was get the heel of his stick on it and steer it right into the padding of Novikov. Gretzky getting Coffey positioned properly. Gretzky against Bekov on the faceoff. Gretzky gets it into the corner. Gets help from Anderson. Now Stelno over. And he gets help from Beckoff, who feeds it off to Homotop, number 15. Coffey spun him around. Roharski looks the other way as he figures Homotop took a dive. And, and he it's did. for shooting it in. And he did. Back to get it, number 29, Igor Kropchuk, out to Beckoff. Beckoff, trying to get around Hartford. Beckoff to Homata. And Canada come back. Here's Gretzky. Gretzky trying to get Coffey going the other way. Now a break for the Soviets. Two on one. Beckoff to Homalap and a six save by Fuhr on the two on one. Now Lemieux back on. Another shot by the Soviets. Fuhr the save and here's Lemieux. With Gretzky, two on one break. Big save, Milnikov on Gretzky. And that time it was Lemieux putting in number 99. And Milnikov slid across to make the save. Handed on a power play. 35 seconds left in the Soviet penalty. Now Semyonov firing it in. Back to get it as Bork for Canada. 
Ramo Bork flips it in. The Tetsov back after it. That pocket into Korshuk. Here's Gretzky. Centered. Lemieux in front. Couldn't get the shot off. Gretzky again. To Bork. Over to Murphy. Into Gretzky. Back to Bork. Into Lemieux. Across to Murphy. Jordan blocked that to the fence on a dive across by Petita. Oh, they moved it around again and around and around, and they did set up a play. But a defenseman was the one who took the shot. Petita making the save on Murphy. Very nicely set up. There's Rick Tockett. Big check inside the zone started this. That's Lemieux. Across. Here's Murphy. And the shot blocked by Fatisov, who was down with plenty of time to block that shot. Had been a Gretzky or a Lemieux, you might have seen a quicker trigger. Now Arianov is out of the penalty box of the Soviets are in full strength. 5.23 left in the second period. Canada 4, Soviets 4. Here's Messier on a faceoff. Gets it to Gartner. He and Fatisov battle. And now Karutov to Makarov. Back to Karutov. Upended and Crossman is there for Canada. Tried to clear it up. Makarov held it in. Over to Kostatonov. His shot blocked. Messier couldn't get it up. Here's Makarov. Back on the point to Fatisov. Centers to Karutov. Shot right on and pure. Made the save and held on. This is the Labatt Canada Cup on CTV. Well, we have had a few dives in this game. Here is one of them. This is the one we mentioned. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Greg Luganis. On the top was the player who Koharski just looked at him and looked the other way. I'll tell you something, both sides are doing a fair amount of that tonight. Soviets, Petisov at the point for the faceoff. Closing in, Murphy dies to poke it away. Amakarov, back of the net, gets it back from Petisov. Makarov for Karuta. He's checked, Canada clear it. Soviets hold it in, but now carried up by Murphy. As Howard Chuck and Sutter with him. To Howard Chuck, shoot! He'll look off the save. Howard Chuck back to the net, stops it in front. Shoot! He scores! Dale Howard Chuck! There's an old line, Dan, that says when you hit a guy, you create a turnover. Sutter behind the net was the reason for this play. Here comes the puck into the zone. The shot is going to go off. The goaltender, Milnikov, here comes Sutter. He's going to take the puck away. Creates the turnover. Power shot, one chance. Comes back out to him. Second shot into the net. And Canada, for the first time, has the lead. His fourth goal of the tournament, Dale Howard shot. But the key, again, was the slugging along the board. It's almost like we're watching that big Soviet game in 1984. The sluggers are doing the job at the key time. Pocket, Sutter. Take a look at the names that are cropping up on the score sheet here tonight. Look at the turnover. Here it comes. There's the big check. And the puck is turned over. The scoring play, Howard Chuck from Murphy and Crop, 15-32 the time. Sutter does not get a point, but I'll tell you, that guy right there loves him. Dale Howard Chuck from the Winnipeg Jets has just given Canada the lead for the first time tonight. Isn't it amazing? We've seen so much of Lemieux and Gretzky. And suddenly, in a big game like this one, the grinders are out. Now a Team Canada line of Gilmore, Pocket, and Goulet. 
4-28 left in the second period. 5-4 Canada. Isn't it amazing the difference in this hockey game compared to games one and two of this series? The artistry isn't there. The excitement certainly is. And a lot of thumping in this game, more than in games one and two. Bork back after the get the puck for Canada. Passing it to Murphy. Murphy to Gilmore. Too far for him. Gilmore racing in. Got her out of the board. Here's Pocket. Back of the net. But intercepted by Kropchuk and cleared. And the Soviets work it to Homatop at center ice. Bork took him out of the play. And Gilmore knocked it to Goulet. And now a high sticking penalty coming up to Bork as he took Homatop out of the play. And Canada will be shorthanded as Bork goes to the penalty box. Alan Eagleson is going to be our guest during the second intermission if he can get his nerves settled down. Oh, that's an that's a NHL referee there you're yelling at. Al? Don <laughs> Koharski calling him as he sees him, and he has seen Ray Bork high stick somebody. And he has called him for it. I wouldn't change a thing the way Team Canada is playing right now. They're getting the odd penalty, but they're also playing the type of hockey that when things have gone sour in the overall playmaking of Gretzky and Lemieux is going to win for them. Soviets on a power play with a forward line of Semyonov, Lomakin, and Semak. White men will be Gusarov and Sadokov. Canada with Gilmore up to win the faceoff. He and Anderson are the penalty killers with Rossman and Rossmore on defense. Gilmore broke the play up. Now Gusarov dropping it back to Fedotov to Gusarov. Alexei Gusarov up the middle for Semyonov, number 30. Same act centered and Anderson there to tip it away. And then Gilmore. Cleared it away for Canada. The Dotop, number 14 for the Soviets, a minute 30. Left in Canada's penalty. Now Gusarov to Padota. Back to Gusarov. Firing to Semyonov. Into Lomakin. Drops it to Samak, but Gartner intercepts. And Gartner fires it away. Notice how they're picking up the men right at the line. Something Brad brought up there, letting the defense back in. They're not doing it anymore. Here's Larionov as the Soviets change on the fly, leaving it for Gusarov. Now to Makarov. Gartner checks him. Makarov tries again to Krutov. Krutov leaving it for Larionov. He drops it back, and Kapisov couldn't hold it in. 42 seconds left in the penalty. The tee off to Kasatona. Kasatona, number seven. Leaving it for Karuta over to Makara. Now to Patisa. Into Lariana. To Patisa to Kasatona. Moves in deeper. And Murphy took it away from him. And Murphy clears it out of there. Twelve seconds left in the penalty. Excellent penalty killing here by Canada. Larry Onoff now trying. Leaves it for Patisa. Patisa flipping it in. Rossman there to poke it away. Gretzky puts it. Anderson able to carry it out. And Gretzky now takes a pass at center ice. Breaking in with four. Gretzky shoots one. And that one off a stick high and wide. And back the other way, Makara. Gains a full sprint now. As Bork has served his penalty. Here's Brian Krupp. Fans on it as he went to clear it. Now drops it to Rochefort. Over to Crossman. Off the board to Gretzky. Gretzky dumps it in. But he's not there for the Soviets. Now cleared out of there by Semyonov. And Pumalev flips it ahead for Priyaka. He gets knocked down by Bork. And Bork will get another penalty here.
Mario Lemieux arguing about the penalty call, but it's a hooking penalty against Bork. Well, Ray Bork up against the Borgs. In this case, I give the penalty. They may have put a little mustard on it, but he also got hooked. Last time, Bork was off. No shots on goal by the Soviets, so they did a terrific job on the penalty killing last time out, but you can play with fire, too. You want to keep doing this. Just a minute nine left in the period, so Canada will, if they can get through this first part, the first minute nine will have a break in the intermission to rest up their penalty killers. Soviets are all for three tonight with the man advantage. And the penalty killers, who did a pretty good job last time for the most part. Gartner out there. And Rochefort will be back at the blue line. Doug Gilmore is going to take the face off against Becca. Who's shown us some pretty good skills in terms of face offs in this tournament. Soviets have four men inside the blue line. Homatop is a way off on the right wing board, but Gilmore wins the draw, and the Soviets have to go back and regroup. Here, Prop Chuck, number 29, giving it to number 15, Homatop. We're in the final minute of period one. Kamiensky moving in. Gartner takes him out. Fewer out of the net to clear it. Homatop losing it. Gilmore trying to knock it out of there and did with a volleyball type move hitting it with his hand and he hit it up into the Soviets bench so the faceoff will be back inside the blue line Off the Soviet players head I think and so the faceoff will come back inside the team Canada zone there's uh, Gilmore there's some of the players that have really noticeably improved uh, their game as the finals have come on Gilmore and Brian Prop is very interesting the overtime period the other night and this game playing very, very well. Now Messier comes out to replace Gartner, so Messier and Gilmore will be the penalty killers. Now Gartner comes back. And they're going to take Gilmore out of there and leave Gartner and Messier up front. This is a Team Canada home game, by the way. They have the last change, or whatever it's worth. Back up against Messier. 47 seconds left in the period. Soviets on a power play. And they get it to Stelno, who moves in from the point. Shot it around, Hobotov. Find a center one, Gartner there to clear it away. Rob Chuck, number 29, back to pick it up. Rob Chuck was supposed to be out for this series with a knee ligament problem, but he's in there tonight. He feeds it to Kamiensky. Into Hobotov. Rockport ties him up, Hobotov gets loose. Gartner hacks away on him, now back off to Rob Chuck. Shot right on, Kamiensky after the rebound. Rob Chuck a drive, and that's good for him. And Messier with eight seconds left, clears it out of there. Soviets have to go back. Rob Chuck with two seconds left, clears it up. Second period is over, a good one for Canada. As they come off the ropes and take the lead after 40 minutes. Well, they outscored the Soviets in the second period, three to nothing. And they have the lead, 5-4. Canada outshot the Soviets 12. The Soviets outshot Canada, correction, 12 to 8 in the second period. Just the turnaround of the last period. Canada outscored the Soviets 3 0. We've seen that a time or two before in this series. 5 4, Canada leads after two. This is the Labatt Canada Cup on CTV. We played 255 minutes and 40 seconds. That's four full games plus 15 minutes and 40 seconds. And the score is 19-18. You can't get much closer than that between these two teams. A lot of offense, but uh, not much to be said between the two teams. 3-3 three, three in the round robin meeting, and 6-5 for the Soviets in game one. 6-5 for Canada in game two. And here after 40 minutes, 5-4 for Team Canada. Canada returning to the ice to another rousing ovation here in Hamilton. Well, the fans here in the city of Hamilton have been tremendous. The games here in this final have been behind Team Canada when they've been down. They cheered them on in their comeback. Canada the other night had only three lines. Mike Keenan said the crowd is our fourth line. I'd say that's a pretty good fourth line. 
By the way, speaking of lines, a statistic just handed us, Mike Keenan used 22 different line combinations. Well, we've only played two periods. Yeah, that's right. He's got a chance yet to find seven or eight more. 29 was his figure the other night. He was in that little room of his off the dressing room. I'm sure trying to concoct a couple of others that will be right for certain situations. First 52 seconds of this period will be pivotal because Canada and Ray Bork will be in the penalty box as the Soviets in this rubber game, the third and deciding game for the 1987 edition of the Canada Cup starts to unfold in period three before us. There's something said up here after the first period. He said if, if it had been anybody but Grant Fuhr, he likely would have been taken out of the game. And I think probably they're right. Grant Fuhr is the kind of goaltender who can be cold in a segment of a game and then suddenly just be brilliant. And I thought he made a couple of very, very important stops in the second period. But he did not have a good first period. You'll be the first to admit it. Ray Bork in the penalty box. Off for hooking at 18.51 of that second period. The shots on goal overall, Canada 27, the Soviets 21. So not as big a differential as we talked about earlier. 27-21 in favor of Canada. That's because the Soviets outshot Canada 12-8 while being outscored 3-0. Here we go at the third period. Hold on to your hat. Canada clear it out as Crossman shot it up on the boards and it goes over the glass into the penalty box area. Nearly decapitated Bork sitting there. Face-off will be about 10 feet inside the Team Canada blue line. Messier and Gartner up front. Rochefort and Crossman on the fence. The green unit for the Soviets. The Rutov, Makarov, and Larianov up front. Batisov and Kasatonov, the point man. How'd you like the job, Dan, of selecting the outstanding player for Canada in this game? Or in this tournament. Mm. Buck cleared down the ice. Kasatonov back to pick it up. Soviets with the man advantage. Up the middle to Karutov. Now to Lariana. Leaves for Makarov. Makarov poked check by Crossman and then Gartner got it to the line but not out. Now Messier does knock it out of there. And Kasatonov with 20 seconds left in the penalty. Over to Larionov. Leaving for Kasatonov. Crossman picks it off and cleared it out. Batisov to Larionov. Five seconds left in the penalty. Larionov firing it around. Now Bork is back on. Here's Batisov. And a poor pass has to be covered up on by Kasatonov, who gives it to Larionov. Larianov to Makara. He cuts in. Now around Coffee. Got it in front. Fewer the save. Still loose. Black at it. Just wide of the net. And Gretzky is back to get it for Canada. Look at Gretzky carry up. Hope checked by Gruta. Covering up on the play is Murphy. Murphy into Lemieux. Offside at the Soviet blue line. This is the Labatt Canada Cup on CTV. Well, this is what it's like to be a fan in Hamilton. Cheering Team Canada on to what they hope will be a victory. Howard, Chuck, Goulet, and Tockett for Canada. Bork and Murphy on the fence. Dumped in by Canada. Howard Chuck into the corner. Gets help from Tockett to Howard Chuck. The goalie, but he couldn't handle a pass. And back comes Pomatop number 15 with Beckoff. And it's broken up by Murphy and cleared away. Number 29, Igor Kropchuk back after it. He quickly fired it up. Goulet carried back in with a couple of teammates already in the Soviet zone. And it's called at an offside. Now Michel Goulet. Of the Quebec Nordiques, just a 50 goal scorer in the National Hockey League. And he'll be out there playing on the line with Gilmore and Sutter at this particular time. And now they've called him up. We're going to try a new combination that has our Chuck out there. Semyonov on the faceoff against Sutter. 
ended up taking it. Now Murphy carries it. Firing it in. Gusarov back to get it. The same act, number 18. He just tipped it ahead to Semyonov. Howard Duck checked him. And Murphy firing it across to Bork. Bork for Canada. Dumping it in for Dotov there with Howard Duck into second. Now same act back to get it. And pocket ran into Gusarov and knocked him for a loop. So be it. Clear it out of there. Trying to rule if Canada could have played it. There's no icing. Bork back after it. Bork to Gretzky. Leaving it for Bork. Up to Tockett. Into center ice to Brent Sutter, who fired it in. Build the top, making a save. And Gusarov back to get him. Leaves it there for Tisov. Loses. Villamio to Gretzky. Here's Gretzky. Out in front, backhander. That hit Lemieux. Prop after the puck. Now Gretzky. Centered. Here's Coffey in and goal. Bill McCott. Rob Coffey. On another great setup by Gretzky. Back comes for Bukin. Or Priyakin it is. His shot. And a six day by Pure. Mario Lemieux cleared it. Not out. But then Coffey picks it up. Has Gretzky and Lemieux with him. Leaving for Gretzky. Gretzky across to Murphy. Shot it just wide. As Murphy came in aggressively from the point. Now it's Hartsburg. Into Brian Crock. Up high off the glass to Centroid. Canada changing on the fly. Here's a clearing pass to Gretzky. And they whistle that down and outside at the Soviet blue line. This is the Labatt Canada Cup on CTV. Well, Team Canada seeming to play with a lot more confidence here in the third period. More in control, control of things, but that's the kind of thing that happens. There's a great play to copy by, from Gretzky. And a pretty good play by the goaltender. Milnikov stuck right with him. Sergei Milnikov, his team trailing 5-4. to four. And he may have held them in there with that save. Puck shot in by Canada. Anderson in on the boards. Comes to the point, into the corner to Gartner. Gartner trying to get it to Anderson. Knocked away by Kravchuk, and he carries the center. Igor Kravchuk, number 29. Cuts in, shot blocked, rebound. Kutov put it over top of the net. Here's Anderson. He loses to Makarov. Center to Larionov. Rossmore blocks the shot. And the rebound is poked wide. Rossman for Canada. Karutov standing right in front of the net, keeping an eye on him, but Crossman beats Gartner, and Gartner slides the puck into the Soviet zone. Del Nove, number four, back to get it. They head to Larionov, into Kaminsky, but broken up by Bork and shot to center, and Patrick tips it into the Soviet zone. Usarov back after it. Cleared it, knocked down by Murphy. And now the Soviets... With Padota, Gilmore checked in. Gilmore giving it to Patrick. Now ahead to Gula. Gula against Kasarov, and he whips the shot high. Up into the crowd. Four minutes, 53 seconds gone. There's Valery Kamienski. He was great at rendezvous. He scored only 13 goals in 37 games in the Soviet Union last year. But he made his year in Quebec City in the second game of rendezvous when he scored those very two important goals and then that great goal to tie up the game the other night against Team Canada. Sent it into overtime. He has just been a phenomenal player. He's saying he's not strong enough, but he's got the great shot. As a matter of fact, I asked Grant Fjord who the toughest shot to deal with on this team. He says Kaminsky. Well, his teammates say that Karutov's got the quickest release, the most dangerous shot, says Fjord, is Kaminsky. Here are the Soviets, Semyonov, number 30, breaking down. Semyonov is checked, and Hartsburg chops the puck out of there. Soviets go back and get it, pass it to off, number 7. To Lomakis. He leaves it, Gusarov to Samak, now to Lomakis. Leaving it for Samak, right through his skates, and... Rick Tockett comes back for Canada. Tockett dumping it in. It's all the way back out to center. 
Hartsburg waits for his team to get onside and drills it back in. Semyonov, number 30 for the Soviets. Gretzky into four check, gives it to Fatisov. Now to Kubalev, number eight. Gretzky checks him to Lemieux. Lemieux over to Bork, who pinches in. Back of the net to Gretzky. Back to Bork, and Ryakin had it. Gretzky held it in to Murphy. Into Lemieux, shoot. Big save again by Mildakov. That time on Lemieux. Dolan center to Gretzky. Backhander shot it wide. Oh, Gretzky with a brilliant opportunity. Here's Imolat moving back. Long shot and sure stop back. Now Gretzky to Brian Prop. And Prop fires it in. Mildakov didn't appear to see it. Here's Gretzky in behind the net. Dropped away by Nemchinov. Held in by Anderson to Gretzky behind the goal. Looking for Lemieux. Lemieux well covered. Gretzky will come out himself. Turn, shoot. Milnikov got a stick on it. Here's Anderson. They have Lemieux tied up and not at the side of the net. Here's Makara. Tied up by Gretzky but gets away. Now Nemchinov, number 12. Leaves for Karuka. Gretzky tried to steal it. Here's Kusara. Firing it in. Rossman for Canada. Back he comes. With Messier. Messier shoots from a bad angle. Milnikov to save. Bodies fly everywhere. And we got to stop it. This is the Labatt Canada Cup on CTV. People are always amazed at Wayne Gretzky's staying power. He just had a shift that lasted longer than two minutes. And yet at the tag end of it, he was still doing things. Just missed the net, and right there with Mario Lemieux, he was going to steer that in with his hand if he could have. That was up on edge. The reason Gretzky didn't get good wood on it or a good angle on it. But what a long shift he had, and yet at the end, he still had the power and the stamina to make a good scoring play. That was Gartner from the pace off that Milnikov stopped, and Bork beats Messier. Bekov tying him up. Messier beating Gartner. Pass behind Goulet. Homatop starts back, got it into the zone, still has it. Homatop to Gusara. Hope checked by Bork. Homatop to Kamienski. Bork takes him out. A pure knocking it back of the net, and Murphy. Has it for Canada. He goes out the other way and gives it to Bork. And Bork flips at the center. But no top back after it. Gartner right on top of it. Gartner up checking aggressively. Here's Gusara. Now to Podotov. In comes Howard Chuck. Podotov beats Kamienski. Now to Bekov. Messier took him up. Howard Chuck getting it in. Soviets. Bekov trying to work it free. And Lomachin drops it back. Gusara. Under pressure as Canada coming in to try and forecheck and rush the Soviets, and it's been working. Here's Semyonov breaking up. Long shot. You're a glove save on that. Clears it up for the board. Canada with a flip pass to Sutter that hopped over his stick. Semyonov trying to come back and copy. Has it for Canada. Into center ice. Here's Sutter to talk it, and they whistle it down on a two-line offside pass. This is the Labatt Canada Cup on CTV. Look at the point system or situation as far as this game is concerned. The top point man is Larry Murphy. He has a goal and two assists. Pocket with a goal and an assist. So has Prop, and so has Sutter and Howardchuk. Not the names you would expect. Here's Coffee for Canada. Canada leading 5-4. 11 minutes, 10 seconds left in regulation time. Here's Lemieux to prop behind the net. Prop couldn't get it centered, and Kasatonov beating one out too far ahead for Humalev. Going back to Hartsburg, and they wave the icing off to the Soviet linesman. Here's Humalev into the corner. Canada come up with it, and Prop is able to chip it out of there. And Fatisov goes back, Canada making a wholesale change on the fly. Buck cleared out. Here's Lariana. Lariana moving in. Taken out of the play by Crossman. Makarov with the puck. 
He gets tied up. Out shot around on the boards. Rossman for Canada, able to scoop it out of there. And McCarron goes hustling back for the Soviets. Messier right on his tail. Two players collide. Here's Makara to Karuta. Now Makara into the corner. Centered. And Messier chips it into center right. Delno back after it for the Soviets. And Gusarov takes over, over to Larianov. Larianov flipping it into center ice. The Frostman for Canada to Norman Rochefort. Now to Gartner. He just lets it go, and here comes Doug Gilmore for Canada. Leaves it for Gartner with a drive off the glass. Bork behind the net to Gartner. Gartner trying to center. Flips it into the corner for Gilmore. He and Fedotov battle for it. Soviets come up with it, and Gusarov cleared it into center ice. Nine and a half minutes left in the third period. Here's Canada with Goulet putting himself offside as he carried it in behind him. This is the Levant Canada Cup on CTV. The hardest thing in the world is to get off to a bad start and then try to get your game right. Doug Brockman has recovered beautifully after he had his early problems in this game. That's known as playing the man. And Larionov flattened on the play. Here's Canada with a line of Gilmore, Lemieux, and Goulet. Canada with a 5-4 lead. 9-20 left in regulation time. That's off for the Soviets. With a line, but Bork breaks it up to Lemieux. Lemieux to Gilmore. Gilmore flipping it through. Petisov back to get it. Now Petisov can't get away from Lemieux. Here's Beckoff trying. Stick handling neatly. Beckoff moving it in. Broken up at the defense. And Goulet clears to Lemieux. Lemieux couldn't get around Petisov. And now covering up for Canada. Bork to Goulet. Into Lemieux. Lemieux cutting in. Shoots one. Off the skate and just wide. Goulet to Lemieux. Lemieux back to Goulet. Goulet put it through the tree. Here's Lemieux. To Goulet. Sutter alone in front, but he couldn't get it to him. Now Sutter comes in. Canada force a face-off in the Soviet zone. 8.32 left in regulation time. Now the Chef Goulet in deep floor checking. And again, it produced a flurry around the net. The game is being played for a good part down on the Soviet end. So the old adage, a good defense is a good offense. Canada, again, I can't stress how confidently Canada is playing here in the third period. They have outshot the Soviets here in the third period, 10 to 4. Now, Robchuk and Sutter from the faceoff tie each other up. And we'll get another faceoff deep in the Soviet zone. Brent Sutter in this game has a goal and an assist. By the way, if you're Gretzky Lemieux fans, each has a point, each an assist. They've not been as dominant in this game on the score sheet, although they've certainly had their opportunities and have handled the puck a lot. Well, Gretzky and Lemieux have missed great chances here in this third period. Here's Pocket knocking it off the board. Semyonov checked by Sutter. He kicks it back to Coffey, who cleared it to center. Now Lomakis. He's bumped off the puck by Howard Chuck. Pocket to Howard Chuck, who fires it in. Pocket chipping it into Sutter. Sutter and Semyonov battle for it. Look at Pocket drying behind the next to Sutter. Trying to get it in front. Lomakin is there. Now to Semyonov, number 30. Over to Samak. Moving in. Trying to get up to Lomakin. Howard Chuck had him tied up. Now center to cut the score. Samak ties this game up with 7.39 left in regulation time. So what else is new? Samak getting a puck right in front of the net. Semyonov being tied up by Coffey, and they kind of a collision there as Howard Chuck went with him. And the puck just rolled past Pure. Samak closing in in tight. Puck bouncing off the board. Everybody giving chase, and that little pick 
allows a forward to scoop behind the net and slip it back out in front. And Samak has scored. He was the one who scored the game winner in overtime in game one of this series. So here we are, 7.39 left in regulation time, a 5-5 tie. Here is Gartner dropping it to Rockford to Crossman. Back for Rockford. Into center ice off of Anderson skate. Now Anderson shooting it in. And Fadokov goes back to pick it up. Fadokov trying to clear it. Anderson held it in. Demetria shot away by the Soviets. And here comes number eight, Yuri Humalak. Moving in, trying to go around Rochefort. Humalak into the corner. Messier for Canada. Out to Mike Gartner. Gartner checked by Fadokov. Gets it again, but... Then the play is offside at the Soviet blue line. 7.03 left in regulation. This is the Labatt Canada Cup on CTV. Welcome back to the Cup. Coliseum and Hamilton. 7.03 left in regulation time. 5-5. Canada and the Soviets. Canada dumping it in, but he's out back to get it. Pocket knocked him down, but... He moved it to Larianov, and here come the Soviets. Three on three break to Makarov. Makarov cutting in. Makarov right in, back ender wide. And Gilmore quickly moves it to Sutter. Sutter to center ice, to Tocket. Batisov knocks it down. Batisov in across the line, tipped back up by Sutter. And Canada with Tocket clearing down the ice. Here's number two, Batisov. Flipping it up, Murphy knocks it down to Gretzky. Gretzky cutting in. Jack Lemieux held it in, but now Bekov back for the Soviets. They had to Kamienski. Kamienski trying to cut through. Hartsburg tied him up. Now Bekov behind the net. Gretzky has him and Joe and Lemieux comes up with it. Out to Gretzky. Gretzky with Trump and Coffey to center. Pass to Coffey. Breaking in. Coffey couldn't get around the... The Fetzman, Delnov, and the Soviets clear it out of there. Muir lets it go for Hartsburg to touch. that icing. 5.45 left in regulation. This is the Levant Canada Cup on CTV. Glenn Anderson, who did most of the hitting in the first period in this game, and the rest of his teammates weren't doing a heck of a lot of it. They have come along. Gretzky, Lemieux, and Croft for Canada. Semyon off against Gretzky on the faceoff. Domenico says you've got to put your stick down. And Gretzky is saying Semyonov won't cooperate. Now they do drop the puck. Knock back of the Soviet goal. Pop into the corner with Gusarov. Gusarov took him up. Now Lemieux getting it loose on the board. Lemieux centered to Gretzky. Turn, couldn't get the shot off as... Samyonov had him tied up. Now Murphy at the point. Shoots deflected by Crawford just wide. Gusarov then able to clear it. And Murphy chases back. Samak right behind him. Samak stealing it. But Bork was there to cover up. Bork for Canada. 5-12 left in regulation time. Here is Bork. Feeding it to Goulet. Shot wide. Bork in to get the rebound. Back of the net to Gula. Out in front to Lemieux. He's too well shot. And the Soviets clear it and get it to center ice. Bork back after it in a hurry. There is Nemchinov shooting it in. Bork gets it to Hartsburg to Gretzky who deflects it in. And Lemieux gets up and it's a fan collar about that. Nasatona out into center ice for Puma left number eight. Into Priyaka. Hartsburg took him up. Copy back for Canada. 428 left in regulation time. Copy to Howard Chuck. Cutting in. Howard Chuck shoots off the blocker of Nilnikov and then hit by a high stick. And that stops play. Well, they hit Howard Chuck on the fly in full stride through center right. The defenseman standing still on the play. And Howard Chuck just barreled right in over the line. Got a good shot away. Melnikov, here he comes. This is the bag into that rush, and he just ducked past the defense. The speed does it. 
and they fired the shot off the blocker of Milnikoff. But was not going to be there. A high stick, and the result is the faceoff will come all the way back down into the Team Canada end of the ring. 4.20 left in regulation time. Absolute sellout here at the Cops Coliseum in Hamilton, 17,037. I think that's a little bit more than a sellout. There's the score, and we have... I mean, it had to be like this, Dan. We simply well, you been... knew the score was going to be 6-5 for yeah. somebody. Yeah, that's right. And the time in the bottom left-hand corner, 4-18 left in regulation play. Here's Rochefort to Messier, to Anderson, gets it to center. Anderson to Gartner. Gartner cutting in, but offside on the far side was Gartner. And the faceoff will be at the Soviet line. Most of what you're seeing out there now, unpenalized, is the restraining type fouls. And I don't think that Don Koharski, being an NHL official, is going to call too much of that stuff. Has to be something pretty gross and indecent for him to make a call now. Here's Messier to Gartner, Crossman firing it in. Milnikov back to get it. Cleared it off onto the wing. Soviets clear it out, and here's Karuta. Soviet with Karuta, cutting in on the left side. Tied up, now centered, man wide open, but elected to pass, and that allowed Crossman to recover and clear it out of there. Milnikov out of the net, defeated up to Makarov, and that's a two-line pass. Now, Makarov is, I think, the best Soviet here tonight. He has been overshadowed somewhat by his line mate, Vladimir Karutov, but tonight he is just dancing out there. He's doing so many things, and he's very, very strong and dominant in this game. Quite the signs in this building tonight. Some of them are, are great. 3.41 left in regulation time. Gretzky, Prop, and Lemieux. Coffee gets it to Hartsburg. Shoot from the point. Prop tried for the deflection, but it took off on him and went up into the ground. And because he steered it up there, the faceoff is going to be outside the blue line. I think that Victor Tikhanov has aged a little bit in this tournament. This week. <laughs> so have we. We're not going to get overtime again, are we, Dan? Good chance of it. Yeah. 3.36 left. Well, it's almost like you're playing sudden death overtime now. That's right. 3.36 left in regulation time. Canada win the faceoff, drop it into their own zone, and Fuhr sets it up for Paul Coffey. <laughs> Off the boards to Prop. Prop back to Coffey, tipped out, but shot right back in by Fedotov, and quickly cleared up. Like Canada again, now Homatop shooting it in. Copy for Canada. Off the boards for Hartsburg. Four-man rush by Canada. Hartsburg to prop. Shoot! Milnikov a save. Hartsburg was going for the net, but Milnikov held on to it. Had the right idea. The feeling is that Milnikov doesn't hold the puck very well, although he certainly did there, taking it off the shaft of his stick and then holding it in his glove. Throw it in, look for the rebound, and here's a good quick shot by Prop. Let it go. And they said the right idea with Hartsburg going for the net, but Milnikov hung on to the rebound. Brian Prop right down there next to Mario Lemieux. Playing a good game tonight. Here is Sutter with Pocket and Howard Chuck. For Canada. Zemyanov on the faceoff. Against Brent Sutter. Sutter gets the draw to Murphy. Murphy shoots that block. And then Seymour split it out of there with his hand. Not a bad but Canada gets possession, then it's waved off. Murphy fires it back in. Hubalek in to get it. Sutter behind the net. Tied up by Hubalek. Look at Sutter battle. To Howard Chuck. Back on the point for Shoots up high. Into the crowd, and we're down to 236. Left in overtime, or in sudden, or in regulation. Uh, they got thinking of overtime. Yeah. You've seen so much of it lately. John Perron in the foreground. Co coach with Lars Denis, or at least uh, Keenan, Mike Keenan. Five, five, 236. Left 
left in regulation time. And they're going to call a timeout. There you see the signal from Victor Tikhonov. He has called a timeout here. That'll give, but I don't, you know, when you see Gretzky out there in the middle of a shift anyway, I don't know whether I want to make a timeout call at that particular time. Give those guys a little extra rest. Well, he must be thinking of Makarov and Karutov and his key people. Yeah, but it does give some of the team Canada aces a chance to catch their breath. Okay. 2.36 left in regulation time. Right in the foreground there, you see Makarov now. Keenan has got something going down there. He wants to flood one side of the ice. Move everybody up one side. See what happens. Off the base off. Gretzky, Lemieux, and Messier will be up front. Now at the last second, he changes his mind. Well, when you look at this 10 years from now and you say 6'5", six 6'5", five, six five, six five, you say, boy, those must have been pretty awful defensive games. I'd have to put it the other way and say they were terrific offensive games. Here's Messier. He's out there with Gartner and Anderson. Soviet Hasatonov coming up with it to Caruta. Two and a half left in regulation time. Good defensive play by Rockport to break it up. Now Batista in center ice. Batista loses to Gartner. Gartner cuts behind the net. Gets it in front. Anderson a shot. Loose puck. Coming to Messier. He fired it around. Here's Anderson again, but stepped away by Kasatonov. Soviet trying to clear it. Messier held it in. Now Larionov breaking out to Makarov. And Rockford is there for Canada. Takes Makarov out and Crossman takes over. Crossman flipping it up. 150 left in regulation time. Rocha shoots at the center. Canada taking control with Murphy. Drop ice to Coffey. Coffey scooping it in. Hustling it after it is Gretzky. And the Soviet player got there first, so it's icing against Canada. 136 left in regulation time. And a face-off deep in Team Canada's end of the ring. Well, now it's hold on time. It'll be Gretzky will take the draw down there. And they're going to send Beck off on again. He's their top man in that department. Now you have to control it. Now they have Howard, Chuck, Lemieux, and Gretzky all center icemen on the ice, and it looks as well. Howard, Chuck will draw the assignment against Becca. Howard, Chuck wins it in. Here's Lemieux poking at the center. Lemieux ahead to Gretzky. Has Murphy with him on a two-on-one to Lemieux. And on goal. He shoots. He scores! Mario Lemieux with 126 remaining.
Four defensemen is really catching in the air right now. They are a little excited here in Hamilton. Here we see it again. Number eight is Murphy, but it's Gretzky. Murphy's the decoy. And there's the shot. Right out of position and unable to make the play with Steldoff. Mario Lemieux's 11th goal of this tournament. Canada takes a 6 5 lead with 1.26 remaining. Look at Gretzky now. He's saying, Look, we've got a minute 26 left to his teammate, Glenn Anderson. I'll hold him. That's what he's saying because they've scored in the final minute before.
third period, 15 to 6. They outshot them every period. In the game, 46 to 23, the total shot in favor of Canada. And Team Canada wins 6 to 5 on Mario Lemieux's 11th goal. May we never ever hear a word about Mario Lemieux's ability or desire again. Momentarily, we're going to go to the ice surface. Let's try and go down there now for the final ceremony. The president we are now ready for the presentation of the players of the game. Could we please have the photographer's cooperation, please? To make the presentation of the Player of the Game Awards, I would like to ask the from the Canon Camera Company, Mr. Paul Mather. And the District Sales Manager for Lamette, Ontario Breweries, Mr. Jim Steele. The, before we do make the presentation of these two awards, wouldn't you agree with me to salute the two teams for one of the best series ever played? The player of the game for Team Soviet Union, who will receive a Canon EOS camera. He was tremendous throughout the series. The joueur l'a battu match pour l'équipe soviétique recevra une caméra Canon. Number two, le numéro deux, Vyacheslav Fekisov. The player of the game for Team Canada, who will receive the complete set of 10 1988 Olympic Winter Game points, courtesy of Canadian Tire, Le Joueur Lamas de Dimas, qui recevra un ensemble complet de Money Olympic. Team Canada, number 10, Dale Carrington. To present the Canada Cup trophy. Please welcome as center ice the tournament chairman, Mr. Alan Eagleson. He is joined by Dr. Gunther Zabetsky, president of the International Ice Hockey Federation, and Mr. Pierre Desjardins, president of the Brasil Labat du Canada. Canada Cup will be presented to the captain of Team Canada and the whole team, Wayne Gretzky. Yeah.
the winning team. Let it once again hear Mr. Michael Burgess with Old Canada. respect for the Soviet Union team. They did a, an absolute fabulous job throughout the tournament and uh, our players, you have to be particularly proud of them that will come back from a deficit such as that against such a great team. You have to be proud of these, uh, these guys and uh, our team representing Canada. What brought them back? What, when it was 4-2, the Soviets had got off to such a quick start, what was it that brought them back? I think it was just composure and a sense of confidence amongst themselves. They've had that throughout the tournament. That uh, composure helped them uh, keep a stable attitude throughout the game, and uh, as a result, uh, we won it on some individual talent that came through for us. But uh, the overall, <laughs> the overall uh, posture of the team was very, very uh, calm and collected, and that was important. They, they didn't uh, get right. They didn't get. <laughs> they didn't get down when they were down by a couple of goals. Michael, they're not too composed now. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Have some fun now. Wayne, get out in here. The captain of Team Canada, the man that won the scoring title as he does in every international tournament he plays. Wayne, that last goal, tell us about it. Well, uh, you know, they've been lining up on the faceoff and uh, our end the same way the whole tournament. They'd like to. Uh, tie his centerman up and jump in and get the puck and uh, we had the defenseman tie the winger up and Merrill jumped in the defenseman tried to pinch and threw it up and I came across and picked it up and uh, you know myself and Mario made the, made the play and Mario put the puck in the net but uh, Larry Murphy who played a great game uh, created the whole situation he went to the net took the defenseman and you know, uh, nothing against Larry, but Mario, Mario's pretty, uh, pretty good around the net. I threw it to Mario. I, I knew I was going to give it to him all the way in, and, uh, um, you know, Mario made no mistake. This was such a close series. Every game decided by one goal. Two of the three go to overtime. What you felt made the difference, made this team the winner? Well, I've said it before, and I don't mean to be, uh, I'm not trying to be uh, uh, critical to their team. I'm just trying to praise Canadians. That, uh, uh, I'll be Glenn Anderson. You can talk to him later. <laughs> um, just the Canadians uh, since 72 uh, have been uh, winning on guts and pride and desire. Uh, we don't get a whole lot of time to, uh, to get a system down. Uh, we've won this tournament on sure hard work and pride. We played six games with about three lines, three and a half lines. We had a lot of injuries. Nobody complained. We had a great time throughout the whole tournament. And uh, you know, it was just a special win. 
My grandmother's birthday today. Happy birthday. <laughs> Big Wayne, congratulations. Thank you very much. So there have been a lot of goals scored in this series, and as Roy mentioned earlier, it's not been a defensive series, but one of the men who has been outstanding from top to bottom throughout the tournament, the goaltender, Grant Fuhrer. Grant, did they cause you any special problems with Soviets? Anything that you hadn't expected throughout this series? Ah, oh, not really. We just we got off a bit of a slow start tonight and got ourselves behind the eight ball, but with a bunch of guys that we have, they all dug down deep. You dig down deep, good things happen. Well, when it was three to nothing, what does the goaltender feel like? You're down in the deciding game, three to nothing. <laughs> you just hope. I mean, uh, you try to make a couple of saves. Hopefully, you keep the games close. If you can keep it close, you know the guys are going to score you some goals eventually. Whoa! <laughs> Who is that? <laughs> That's Anderson again. In the, in the third period, <laughs> in the third period, the team played with so much confidence. It looked like they knew they had the game in the bag, coming out with that one goal lead. That's Andy again. What happened in the second intermission? The team came out with so much confidence in that final period. Oh, we've been down before. I mean, it's not the first time we've been down two goals, so. I mean, the guys knew we could come back. It's just a matter of we had to dig deep. Play well in our end. If we played well in our end, we knew we'd get our chances in their end. These guys shooting at you throughout this tournament, some of them can put the puck in the net pretty well. Who scared you? Their big line plays well. I mean, uh, they kind of had my number through the series. And except for the Soviets, the average wasn't bad, but you play the Soviets, things seem to climb a little bit. What about the rest of the tournament? You played every minute of every game. Would you just as soon have had a game off sometime? And how do you feel right now, physically? I'm loving it. I mean, uh, the more I play, the better I feel. So the more games I get in, the happier I am, and things worked out. <laughs> <laughs> well, Grant, enjoy. Thank you very much. Congratulations. Canada wins Canada Cup 87. This is Labatt Canada Cup on CTV.